this deck option you can still punch for the money, right? It features an outlet screen, slim bezel, fingerprint sensor, huge keyboard with number pad included, huge strap pack, and a 63 watt power battery nice. with great software and good performance. Or is it? Now let's find out today in today's review. I've been dating driving this laptop for the past months, so let's see what it does and does not do well. And also a quick plug, I unboxed the laptop here, so click the icon here to check it out. It's here. Hmm. I'm sure you can read from the title of this video, I'm currently talking about the ever so popular Vivo Book outlet that ASUS started selling past year ago. This one is ASUS Vivo Book Pro 15 outlet. There's other models such as 14 inch outlet or non pro models. That's a lot of them. Alright, with that said, let's get straight into the video, which we will begin by talking about the model of this exact laptop as there are a lot of similar ones selling out there. This model that I purchased comes with the AMD Ryzen 5 5600H and the RTX 3050 laptop versions with 4 gigs of VRAM, 16 gigs of RAM, and comes with a 512 M2 SSD. The exact model of this is called M3500Q, and you can find it with this model pre-installed with Windows with Windows 11 and comes with a home and student office 2021 version. There is some bloatware installed such as Mac Cafe, but you can pretty easily remove them. So and now we're gonna talk about the performance of this laptop. All the settings are listed and the laptop is plugged in for the best performance. I have also adjusted it to the best performance mode in the My Asus app. All the games that we'll be testing on this laptop is Counter Strike Global Offensive, Frozen Horizon 4, Valorant, Genji Impact. And for the benchmark, we'll be running Cinebench R33, Crystal Disk Mark, 3D Mark, Time Spy. So now I'll be playing each benchmark. Performance of this laptop with the RTX 3050 are moderate and pales in comparison when compared to other similar laptops with the RTX 3050. Though it could be said that there's different TDP, which is the power that the laptop supplies the GPU to allow it to run faster. And it's probably due to insufficient cooling.
35 degree is also the highest temperature that you will allow it to go before underclocking it. And now to battery life. Battery life is one of the most important things about a laptop being a portable laptop. Well, for this laptop, it does a fair well. For all the battery tests I'll be conducting, I'll be charging it to 100% and slowly draining it to 10% before ending it. While using it for light coding on Visual Studio 2019, with battery saver on when my ASUS app turned to whisper mode, it only lasted just under 4 hours of usage while being on 60% brightness and with no sound turned on. But only lasting just under 3 hours when on 60% brightness while watching YouTube video 1080p on 70% loudness with the speakers and with the same battery saving settings. Your battery life mainly depends on the screen brightness. If the brighter the screen, the faster your battery drains and will die. The laptop only lasts just under an hour while playing games. The battery will only last just an hour or two depending on what game while using the AMD integrated graphics and while using the RTX 3050 on battery, it will just last under an hour. All these tests are done without the keyboard backlight turned on. While on the topic of battery, there is also a 120W charger included and it gets really hot. It is not recommended to have it placed in a corner with no airflow or cooling. Charging the laptop takes about 2 hours to fully charge it from 10% to 100 while only taking 1 hour and 30 minutes to charge it from 10% to 95. Bear in mind it is with laptop just turned off and while just setting it slowly charge without using it. After the performance, of course, we're going to start with the laptop build quality and materials. The body is solidly built and have good structure. Same goes for the body of the screen. The top is made out of aluminium from the way it feels and the rest of the builds are made from plastic and with three rubber feet at the bottom as you can see. However, the top aluminium are quite the fingerprint magnet like the new M2 MacBook Air. The screen itself can be quite the dust magnet as well. The laptop handle screen and body flexing just right like other mid-range laptop and it's better than the average. The laptop is considered light as it only weighs around 1.65 kg. The design of the laptop is normal for a 2022 laptop featuring a normal size keyboard, thin bezel, big trackpad that's angled a further away from the WASD keys and a nearly full size keyboard with a numpad included. But on this topic of numpad, we should turn around to the side and we will find the ports. The port selection aren't that great and are quite limited. It only features two USB 2.0 on the left side and on the right side it has a one water break, water break. And on the right side it has one USB 3.2, one HDMI 1.4, one Type C that only support data transfer and a micro SD card slot with a 3.5mm combo audio jack as well. It doesn't have Ethernet port or a full size SD card slot, but since this laptop is intended for professionals and most DSLR and mirrorless camera users, it's SD card instead of micro SD. The Type C port also only supports data transferring, so there's no charging with the Type C on this laptop. There's also an issue where most, if not all, the ports are contained on the right side of the laptop which means it will be hindering when you're moving your mouse. Keyboard, biometric and trackpad. Now that we are at the topic of issues, the keyboard feels just fine like most laptops and can get work done. But I definitely felt better one since this keyboard is lacking on the tactile and key travel. It also features a backlight with white LED which is a nice touch but that can be quite protruding to the eyes when viewed from the normal angle. Be that for it in a dark room where you're most likely going to be using the keyboard light. After rendering some videos or playing heavy titles for a prolonged period amount of time with the ASUS software set to performance mode, the keyboard does start to get hot to the touch depending on what game and settings you're playing on and how fast does the computer have to run. The keyboard happens to suck dust really well which means your keyboard will be really dusty and same goes for the screen as you'll be closing the laptop. Like this. I also happen to have an issue where the spacebar will squeak or ping when pressed but only happens on the right side of the spacebar 
which is annoying because I usually press the spacebar with my left thumb instead of my right thumb. But sometimes the sound is not present. I'm guessing it's from the stabilizer that's causing the sound. So here's an example of the video playing. Wait, what? That's a squeaking sound? It doesn't happen here. Since we're talking about a keyboard, we gotta talk about the built-in fingerprint sensor which also functions as a power button. It's not reliable as it failed on me quite a few times and having to reinstall the drivers to get it working back in. And also it randomly forget my fingerprint. So, so in short, it's not reliable and can get quite annoying at times. And if, for example, you have some documents that for you forget to save and the computer went to sleep, you're done. And here's a video playing. So, fingerprint is broken, so it doesn't work. So, if it doesn't work, when you press this and enter the password, it just gives you this error, which means that you're already 100% need to restart the computer, so it's kind of f***ing dumb. I swear to God. Will. You definitely could tell I was pissed off. Actually, after using it for a while, I actually noticed you can press the button, set up my pin to actually reset the pin and not lose your progress. Well, right after the fingerprint, we're of course gonna talk about the trackpad, which is excellent. The surface is silky smooth and are quite accurate. You can also use multi-touch gesture with windows, which is really nice. If there's any cons about it, it would be sometimes it has latency initially when you just glide your finger on the surface and the gap between the body and the touchpad will have dust stuck inside it. And finally, the display and the main selling point of the laptop, the screen. Featuring a 15.6 inch 1080p outlet that's made by Samsung which inside a laptop that's not breaking the bank, is it too good to be true? Now in terms of color accuracy, it is Pantone validated, which means the color performance is exceptional with the score of over 100% in sRGB, 100% in DCI-P3, and 98% on Adobe RGB, which I mean is one of the best display on a laptop which you can use it for color editing workflows. To the untrained eye, they will definitely be able to tell between IPS panel and outlet since the color will be brighter and a lot more vibrant on the screen. The brightness on the outlet panel are of course better than IPS and TM panel, but in a well-lit or outside environment, it will be dim or just enough to see it properly. So, watch the catch. Well, since the screen isn't matte and literally looks like a mirror pointing back at you, you will have some distraction, lights or reflection of windows. After that, the screen itself looks warped and bent most likely because it's made from plastic and the hot air coming out from the front of the keyboard causing the screen to get warped, which is probably not that big of a deal. And now to the most well-known issue of an outlet screen. It's burning. Which means in the long term, your screen will degrade and start to leave behind traces that has been shown for an extended period amount of time and it gets worse if you are constantly using it at higher brightness as well. Asus themselves have added some features such as pictures shift, pixel refresh and more to mediate the issues and reduce the chances of burning or to slow them down but ultimately, it will eventually burn because it is an OLED panel which means the biggest selling point of this laptop is also the downfall in the long run. So after this review, I'll probably be doing some updates for the screen of this laptop in a few months, half a year, or maybe a few years down the line. The screen also flickers on low brightness and Asus themselves has noted it as they added a section called Outlet Flicker Free Dimming to lower the brightness without having flickering present on the display but using it destroys the image. As an example, look at this. It's gonna start flickering. So they have this software like to fix the issue. So you don't go below 50, you just dim using this. But see the issue goes away like, like if I just use the normal one it doesn't really affect it 
So yeah, that's this software is the real cause. Speaking of display, this display does have HDR which looks good but it's buggy and since the screen doesn't get bright enough to properly display HDR content though I do think it still looks good when done in a dimly lit environment and with HDR settings properly adjusted. If you're looking for a laptop to work professionally and have a really well calibrated display on the laptop, I would recommend you to look for other laptops with OLED screen such as XPS 15 with an outlet or maybe just buy a dedicated well calibrated monitor quick notes and connectivity wireless connectivity includes Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth as it's true of most Windows laptop but it lacks Ethernet port as mentioned and not being able to charge your laptop with the Type-C is a downside too as it's becoming the norm I also wanted to add that the HDMI port here doesn't directly connect to the dedicated graphics so you will still have to go through AMD integrated graphics which will reduce your performance which is disappointing. There are 3 microphones included on the top bezel and the quality are quite good picking up clear and crisp audio in most situations and even in noisy environments. There are 2 main mics for stereo and one used for noise cancelling from what I tested. All in all, the mics on this laptop are quite good. Their software provides you with the AI noise cancelling features and different levels for you to adjust depending on what environment you are in or how noisy it is. So this is what a 720p webcam looks like. I would say it's alright. Since you're using it for online calls, meeting and with compression, it won't really matter that much and people still can see you clearly. And as you can see, right now this environment is clearly lit, so it's really well lit. And considering that, there's really less green on the video, since this is a really well lit place right now. But clearly you can see it will struggle in low light performance as I'll be putting right here. Oh hey, this is the low light performance. It's not actually that dark, but it's dark enough that it will hinder the performance. You can see the frame rate is kind of choppy compared to the brightly lit scene. And yeah, this is the low light performance. So that's my thing. So I would recommend like for 2022 to have a 1080p camera and to, if possible, make the sensor in the camera larger so that it will do better in low light. There is a privacy shutter included so you don't have to tape it yourself, which is pretty nice. It doesn't support window halo recognition since it doesn't have an IR camera, so that's a bummer. Overall, I would say it might built in for noise cancellation. Overall, I would say the microphone on this laptop is quite good and ASUS will provide you with the software to use the AI noise cancelling feature. And finally, to the speaker of the laptop. It is a disappointment that it is tuned by Harman and Harden, but it just sounds alright since it's downward firing, which means the sound isn't as good compared to other front firing or side firing speakers. It also lacks on the bass and sound tinny. Other than that, the sounds are quite clear for human speech and sounds good on the mid to high end of sound frequency. With some EQing with the pre-included app which is called DTS, you can make it sound much better. But you can never fix the bass. That's just how it is. You can't. You can't fix the bass. I'm really losing my voice just recording this. So here is a video of how the laptop sounds. Now finally to the price, it costs just under 1000 US dollar. So I would say it's a good deal if I didn't encounter so many issues that's not covered on YouTube or most of the reviews. And now we will go into conclusion. So what do I think of it?
Well, short answer, it sucks. Long answer, it still sucks. If you're already gonna buy this laptop, prepare to spend more and go for the 16 gb version as 8 gb will not be enough for this laptop and Windows itself already takes 3 GB of your RAM because AMD Radeon graphics and without anything open or installed. So basically it's new installation and already takes 3 GB of your RAM. Also bear in mind that this is soldered RAM because it is a pro model which means you can't really upgrade it or future proof it. And the most RAM they'll allow you to buy is also 16 so just go for it if you're gonna buy it. All the issues that I'll be bringing up here are my own personal experience and purely from me after using it for about a month as the debut of this video. And also I recommend buying the Windows 10 version pre-installed if possible since it's a lot more stable and less buggy than Windows 11 which is my model. Which you can see the bug here. I'll be posting there's three bugs. So as you can see I have this as my main display this is display too. So this is the main display, but when I press the volume, it changes. So that doesn't make sense, it should be right here, which it's not doing. For this part, I was actually opening the application, as you can see I'm pressing it on the taskbar, but it just pops up for a split second and then goes back which is really annoying and even as I'm editing now, right now, it still happens I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure this is a Windows 11 issues I already tried restarting File Explorer as recommended by some redditors that never had any issues in Windows 11 they are so lucky and even I did that, it would just fix it for a moment and then the problem would come back I know it was gonna be an issue so I restarted the computer and now Let's try to blow it up. So let's see. Oh, a black and a white cursor screen. Hey, oh. Windows 11, man. Oh my god. Let's just see if there's any way. I'll try to, like. So, it. what happened for this was the Windows would just randomly blue screen, and after blue screen, it would restart and it would boot into. The UEFI, which is what this is called. And as you can see, there's no bootable drive. So that's why I send it to repair center. There's just too many issues. I've actually managed to catch it blue screen. So enjoy. Uh, on the note of that, I actually have to personally reinstall Windows, the whole Windows 11. Since the previous Windows of 11 that they pre-installed are too buggy and have a lot of issues, but even after reinstalling, there's still issues. So I guess Windows 11 sucks. So right now, what I'm doing is since when I press ALTZ on the CSGO screen, it won't actually open the GeForce experience for me to record so I had to open another application to open the GeForce experience to start recording and, and as you can see it started recording so I just let it run some benchmark and after a bit I just close stop recording I stop and then I went back to check the clip and then this is what I saw Since the previous version of Windows 11 that they pre-installed are too buggy and has a lot of issues like the battery life and just Windows 11 bugs just like filled with bugs. There was a black screen on me once and blue screen on me about 7 times in the span of 2 weeks. Therefore, limit as a pain in the ass to deal with and most customers or students wouldn't want to deal with problems like that. I wouldn't recommend buying it. However, I did met some fellows of people that I totally don't know but they have the same model or the same exact configuration and memory. yeah, they never had issues. Both of them are Windows 11, no issues, no bug, no nothing. Battery life is also alright for them too. Which brings a question into my mind. Maybe I'm just a person that destroys everything that comes to my hand but if you ask me, 
if I would buy this again, I'll probably say not since I'm kind of scared of this laptop of bots, problems, issues all coming up bite me you know those traumatized PTSD? yes, PTSD in my pure opinion, if I could refund it, I would and just buy a Dell laptop that's better this laptop is expensive because it's an old look so I would say that's still a lot of work to so I would say that's a lot of work that need to be fixed as the fingerprint issue are actually common as I've seen some other review mention it and you probably wouldn't want to deal with this because there's a lot of issue and work that you need to fix and while you're using this for your studies or workflow it, you shouldn't have to deal with issue like this and I would say there's still a lot of fixes that need to be implemented or just fix the drivers or fingerprint or hardware and most people wouldn't want to deal with this issue especially when you're using it for study or workflow I honestly expected this to be plug and play and not no issues at all since this feature and older screen they also are priced more expensive compared to other similar laptops or better deals laptop that manufacturer have be at it for a versus screen and others that's for you to decide since this feature and older screen they are also priced more expensive compared to other laptop manufacturer be at be at it for a versus screen and others but that's for you to decide it is not a bad deal even with me criticizing it so badly it's because it's a good deal that you won't purchase it in the first place but if you want a better gaming laptop i would recommend waiting for the ryzen 6000 series laptop or go with other gaming laptops such as asus tough hp weakers lenovo legion ideal bad gaming tree or hp omen Dell G15 and others since they all have high refresh rate screen and better price to performance ratio compared to this and the cooling on this laptop isn't sufficient considering it's a yes. 3050 in it and a 5600Hz and the temperature will go up to 95 degree as mentioned on the performance category so you will so honestly buy it if you're fine with the issue and burn in that will eventually come or if you like the features and going for the looks but if you got the money, I would recommend going for other laptops since it's a lot more worth it and better deal. If you aren't just going for the OLED screen, of course, that's accounting. The pantry life isn't the worst, but if you're looking for a long session, you better bring your charger with you. But be it as it may, well, you know, this laptop performance isn't actually that bad. If you want a fast mid-range laptop that's actually not going to chew your wallet, it's a good deal for students or users who wanted a round-rounded laptop for playing games, streaming, or daily productivity. Since most of the issues I encountered are personal, and I haven't seen much issue on other reviewers, it's honestly the main reason that I even bought this laptop because it seemed like a really good deal in the first place. But now I... So, hi guys, the camera... The camera doesn't have any SD card space now. It's 64 gb actually, so that's kind of great. But now that I have personal encounter with the laptop, it definitely changed my perspective ever so slightly. Which I mean, it's really bad. I mean, it's like straight up bad. But I'm just gonna say it like that. And, and now it's your turn. Whether or not you want to buy this laptop, will depend on you. If there's a lot of issue like mine, you should just bring it to ASUS Service Center. Right? And well, with that. That's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. I put a lot of effort into it without without actually having much gain at all other than just sharing the video and my opinion of the laptop since I actually bought it with my own money it's, it's quite expensive you know and especially you're yeah, trying to buy a laptop that will last you long enough like 4 years then it's, it's not really what this type of laptop it's not really the laptop you would want to have for 4 years so yeah